Let's add another fader to control the speed. So drop that one in place. And again, give it a sensible name. So let's call this one speed. And if I want this to control the multiple speed, we simply find the parameter and type in speed.x. Each object sends out a continuous value from 0 to 1. So down the bottom here we've got no speed. Up the top, we've got maximum speed. If we want them bouncing around even faster, just need to multiply it by 2. Now down the bottom we have a speed of 0, and up the top we have a speed of twice the maximum. Yeah, you can see it moves much faster. If we take 1 away from this, now we can reverse the direction as well. It goes from minus 1 to 1. So if we move it down the bottom, you can see they move backwards. So here they're attracted to my fingers, and here they're completely repelled. So here you can get some really crazy, wacky kind of modulation that it'd be pretty difficult to get with a typical fader knob physical controller. Of course, in the studio and on stage, you don't want to have to think about what each thing does. So you can use these text objects to label them. Here I can label this fader fricked. And I can copy and paste this. Uh, to the other fader, and change the text to speed. Now I can instantly see what these faders do. So far I've used the powerful control and modulation capabilities of the Lima to uh, alter and tweak effects, but this time I'm going to use it to change the shape of the sound itself. So I'm going to add a new object, the ring area, which is kind of a joystick object, and I'm going to use this to control two parameters of the synth patch. So in the X direction, we're going to control the attack portion of this synth. And in the Y direction, we're going to control the decay. So let's map this. So let's choose a MIDI output. If we press this button, this is a shortcut. Now it will allocate the next available control change message. Uh, we can see if we click it here, it chooses 4. We haven't used 4 yet. For mapping, I'm going to turn off the Y, so that moving the ring area object only sends out one parameter. I'm going to move it now, send out X and map it to the attack. I don't want to lose my sound when I have the ring area to the right, so let's not use the full range. I'm going to use 0 to 500 milliseconds. You can see how moving the ring area from left to right changes the attack of the envelope. So let's do the same with Y. So deselect X, select Y, and now I'm going to map this to the decay. Now if I use the full range, then with the shortest decay you wouldn't even hear this sound. So let's just go a little bit higher. Let's have a minimum of 100, and a maximum of 600. You can see how that's mapped and ready to go. Next we can reactivate X and see what that allows us to do with the sound. You can see that moving the ring area around changes the shape of the envelope. Currently this ring area object behaves just like a joystick, so when we let go, it springs back to the center. But I can change the properties of this object, change how it behaves. So we can change this attractor value so that instead of jumping back to the center, it might jump back to the side, or the bottom left. Perhaps we like this very short, blippy kind of sound. And instead of typing in a value here, we can have these balls control the attractor. So first we need to double check the name of this object. So this is the multiball. We can see that here. And in the attractor value boxes, we just need to type in multiball.x for the x value and multiball.y for the y value. And now you can see we've got three anchors controlled by each of the balls. So if we set these balls in motion, we can start to get some really interesting dynamic kind of sounds. You can have the balls bouncing around quickly for rapidly changing sounds, or have them moving really slowly for slowly evolving patches. Very quick, organic way to take a loop and keep it interesting throughout a track. This time I'm going to simulate a kind of surround sound effect with another ring area object. Of course, we're working with two channels here, so I'm going to use a little cheat. Uh, I'm going to use left and right to pan the sound left and right. And up and down is going to increase the volume and decrease the reverb, or decrease the volume and increase the reverb. 
putting the sound closer or further away in the mix. Again, let's use the auto assign button to make things easy. Deactivate Y. And now I'm going to add this utility object, which lets me do a few simple things such as panning and changing the gain. So the X is going to control the pan. And Y is going to control the gain. Again, I don't want to use the whole range here because I only want a subtle effect. I'm only going to change from, say, minus 3.5 to 3.5 decibels. So we're just talking about a small change. I also want this to control reverb amount. So let's take a reverb effect, drop it onto a return, and then increase the dry wet to 100% wet. Moving the ring area in the Y axis already changes the gain. Now we also need to assign this to the send. So of course we want increasing to decrease the reverb. So let's just reverse the direction of this message. This should now give us powerful control over the spatial aspects of this sound. Again, to make the control even more dynamic, I can get these objects interacting. What if I wanted just the purple ball to control the anchor of this ring area? We can label the balls by clicking on this option. And now you can see that the purple ball is zero. So if we go and change the attractor to the name of this object, multiball, so multiball.x, square brackets zero, that refers to the purple ball, and do the same for the y, so multiple dot y, square brackets, zero. Again, taking the y position of the purple ball. So now we have a very dynamic interactive system that's taken a very simple, very dull sound. And using these objects in the Lima, not purely as a control surface, but to actually allow us to modulate and affect sounds in completely new ways that you couldn't with your typical controller, we've come up with something very interesting that you can use in the context of a production.